Ukraine has said it will never give up the Crimean Peninsula, which Russian forces have effectively taken control of. The West has condemned Russia for a clear violation of sovereignty. What do Financial Times correspondents make of the situation on the ground? In Crimea, home of Russia's Black Sea fleet, things seem strangely calm. The situation here is incredibly bizarre. Basically, what you had is Russia launching a so-called silent invasion of Crimea. Um, there's no fighting, there's no unrest. It's, it's really quite bizarre. So you have hundreds of Russian troops stationed now outside all the main Ukrainian military bases, but it's not really clear what they're doing. They're just kind of controlling at some point uh, the Ukrainian soldiers have refused to give up the military bases, so they're standing there on the inside of the bases. So it's a bit of a very bizarre frozen standoff. She says Russian claims of threats against ethnic Russians and an attack against a ministry building seem unfounded. So you have Russia saying that there's incidents of unrest on the ground here. But when I went there on Saturday and spoke to not only local residents, but also the head of the riot, Ukrainian riot police based in the very building that was said to be under attack, he said that no attack had taken place. There were also pro-Russian uh, militiamen standing outside, had been there since the day before. They also denied an attack had taken place. So basically you have kind of a war of disinformation going on right now. In Ukraine's east, there also seems to be an uneasy calm. There were big demonstrations over the weekend where other protesters who supported the new Kiev government were roughed up, beaten up. Uh, but over the last two days, it's really been pretty quiet. On the surface, uh, things look really pretty normal. Um, but when you do talk to people, they're very worried about, uh, about uh, what's happening in Crimea. Many of them are ethnic Russians or Russian speakers, so they feel very close to Russia, but they're also Ukrainian citizens. So they're sort of torn uh, as to whether Russia is acting correctly in Crimea or not. There's a minority opinion which is calling for Russia to move into eastern Ukraine as well, but that is still a fairly small minority at the moment and Russian claims of a refugee crisis on the border appear to be unfounded. And one of the reports they had out over the weekend was that several hundred thousand Ukrainians have uh, sought refuge in, uh, in Russia. Um, I drove up to the Ukrainian-Russian border and uh, there's absolutely nothing happening. So you can certainly see that the parts of the Russian media are trying to create a story which simply doesn't exist. All eyes now are on Western reaction to the invasion. In Brussels, the focus is on de-escalation rather than sanctions. Uh, what we've been hearing is a lot of stepped-up rhetoric, uh, you know, calls for this being uh, an illegal action uh, in, in Crimea, violating international law, condemnations. But what we actually see behind the scenes is an attempt to de-escalate, and we haven't seen a move to sanctions. We saw no movement on military response. And one of the things they've been talking about quite a bit now is deploying international monitors to Crimea to safeguard uh, Russian minorities there. You know, this has been Putin's, you know, sort of causes belli or his, his, you know, as, as Secretary Kerry put it over the weekend, his trumped up reason for moving into Crimea. Uh, there is no one in Europe or the U.S. who believes this is actually really happening. But they view this as a way to placate Russian, uh, to placate Putin in particular, and get Putin to move Russian troops back to bases. That's clearly the offer they have on the table now, and they're waiting to see how Putin responds to it.